Peace, power, and love. It's your one and only Kansu Sheshmo Amun, and welcome to another Team Osiris broadcast. Man, today is a special episode because we are dealing in technology, Team Osiris Tech. Very, very important thing that um, we deal with on a day to day basis, man technology. Technology goes hand in hand with science, engineering, and mathematics, man. We, uh, we need technology. Technology gives us the ability to comprehend science, be able to advance engineering and mathematics. And it's important because today we're talking about two things, two things that are very vital. Um, what's vital is net neutrality and VPNs. These two things, man, are some subject matters that a lot of us take for granted. And if we don't think about it and don't be proactive about it, it can really compromise our ability to function in the world today. And myself, Brother Higgs Boson, Brother Tristan Turner, and Brother Melvin Jefferson are gonna expound on it today to give you some knowledge and information that you can apply the minute you finish watching this show. Uh, so it's gonna be really, really dynamic. And you think about the importance of technology today. When we look at independent companies like Airbnb, Facebook, Uber, Lyft, um, these companies are independent companies that don't necessarily have a product. I mean, Airbnb, you can rent real estate all over the world, yet they own none of it. Uber and Lyft, they're a livery company, basically a taxi company with no vehicles at all. And Facebook is a blogging platform that uses blogging technology called WordPress to entice advertisers to promote on their, pay, on their space without any content because the people provide the content. So just think about where technology is going today, debit cards, things of that nature. Look at the medical field. You have robots that are performing um, operations on people today. It's just an amazing, an amazing thing. And I want to really yield the floor to my brother Higgs Boson um, and brother Tristan Turner that are going to basically break down net neutrality in the VPN. It's real, real important. Brother Higgs, what's going on, man? I yield the floor. Hey, how you doing? Brother, how you doing? So, yeah, um, we're here to talk about net neutrality and uh, VPN works. Uh, December the 14th, Senate will be in the vote to decide to repeal net neutrality. I don't, what, I don't know what you call uh, I guess you call it post net neutrality if it goes through. And uh, basically, uh, it's going to be pay to play on all sides. Your ISP, which we told you about in the last Tech Talk video, uh, internet service provider, they're going to have all of the power and they're going to be uh, trying to make some money off of you. But there is a way, there is a way to uh, protect yourselves and we're going to uh, go in a little bit talking about VPNs. Uh, but Tristan? Yeah, so just to start out, you know, for for those that don't know, you know, what this net neutrality argument is and, you know, where this is all coming from and the history behind it, I'm going to just take you over to Wiki real quick and just give you a little backdrop on this, a little context. So um, <clears throat> this is net neutrality in the United States. You can search that on Wiki or on Google or whatever, and you can find the info. So it says here in the 1980s, the internet became legally available for commercial use. And in the early years of public, Oh, Tris, could you share your screen? Please. Oh, yeah. If you oh, yeah, okay. You, you're right. Thought I had done that already. All right, you got it. Here we go. Yep. All right, you got me? All yeah. right. So, yeah. So, right here. In the late eight, 1980s, the internet became legally available for commercial use. And in the early years of public uh, use of the internet, this was its main use. Public access was limited and largely reached through dial-up modem, as well as the bulletin board system, dial-up culture that preceded it. Uh, the internet was viewed more as a commercial service than a domestic and societal system. Being business services, cable modem, internet access, and high-speed data links, which make up the internet's core, had always since their creation been categorized under US law as information service, unlike telephone services, including services by data, and not as telecommunications services, and thus had not been subject to common carrier regulations. 
as upheld in the National Cable versus Telecommunications Association uh, and, and Telecommunications Association versus Brand X Internet Services. Right, so by the late 1980s to the early 2000s, the internet started to become more common in code and wider you know, society. Uh, in the 1980s, arguments about the public interest requirements of telecommunications industry in the U.S. arose. Whether companies involved in broadcasting were best viewed as community trustees with obligations to society and consumers or mere market participants with obligations only to their shareholders you know, just be about the money. Uh, the legal debate about net neutrality regulations of the 2000s echoes this debate. So we just, we face with it again. So then you fast forward to 2006, there was a, a previous bill before this one is coming up here in December system, being businesses services, cable modem, internet access and high speed data links, which make up the internet's core had always since their creation been categorized under US law as an informational service. Unlike telephone services, including services dial-up modem, and not as telecommunications service, and thus had not been subject to common carrier regulations as upheld in National Cable and Telecommunications Association versus Brand X Internet Services. All right, then we fast forward to the 90s and 2000s. Internet becomes more common in households and the wider society. Um, in the 1980s, Arguments start coming up about the public interest uh, requirements of telecommunications industry in the U.S. arose, whether companies involved in broadcasting were best viewed as community trustees with obligations to society and consumers or mere market participants with obligations only to their shareholders. The legal debate about net neutrality regulations of the 2000s echoes the debate. So they, this is like a philosophical conversation ever since the internet came out of how we're going to approach this, you know what I'm saying? Then you jump over to 2006, all right, you had a bill that was introduced that, that was kind of like the one we're facing now. Uh, it was May 2006, all right, but it was not acted by Congress. They, they shot it down. So we actually already dodged one bullet, you know what I'm saying, in our recent history on that, right? Um, <clears throat> and I, I got the bill right here, you know, 109th Congress, second session, got the whole thing here. And it's a lot of legalese mumbo jumbo. But I mean, that, that's the, the basics of it. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, now we just looking at, do we want the companies to necessarily not consider themselves as these, these trustees, you know, the, this power, the wielding this power, but for good. In other words, allowing equal access to whatever website you want to go to as long as you are or buying internet. That's what we have now, you know, but what we're looking at is potentially like, you know, pay type services, cart services, you know what I'm saying? You might get a package, you know, for $14.99 that only has five different things on it. And then if you want something else outside of that, you got to add on another package that might be, you know, $7.99 to $24.99 or whatever, however they want to do it. Kind of like cable, you know, with videos, you know, your views. <clears throat> you could potentially have all this happening. Yeah, uh, for good or for bad, we got a president who wants to make companies money and he has the FCC backing on this. That's why I, I, I kind of feel like the actual vote is going to go through. It may not go through. Uh, yeah, it very well may not go through, but um, I mean, we've been here a long time. Uh, they've thrown everything at us. <laughs> One aspect of this um, is I think that it will reduce the level of information that people have access to. And I, I think that's a terrible thing, especially amongst, you know, on these and the poor folk, you know. Um, it, 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 it's going to cost a lot more just to be able to get your hands on the same information. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's that. gonna. The implications are like you got this built-in classism. You know what I'm saying? Where depending on what kind of coin you bring in, that's gonna reflect how you can edify yourself, what access you have to these online resources. You know, so it does have societal impacts for those that's low income. You know, 
that that know more about the internet than just getting email, which is what they can afford. They might can afford a package where you can just get your Gmail and you get some ESPN and BET, you know what I'm saying, a couple other things. But they want to do something that they can't really afford more than 14 99 whatever for the internet. So <clears throat> it's, 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 it's at that point. Yeah, um, you might get the fake news package, you know. Yeah, for real, for real, for real. Yeah. Might have to pay extra just, you know, real information, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, there's going to be people who just sit by and let this go, and then uh, I, what what can we do about this? You know, I, I don't think there's anything the commenter can really. Do do about it except for prepare themselves to to uh, adapt to whatever happens you know what i'm saying just we adapted having internet in the first place you know what i'm saying I even want that so it'll just be a matter of adapting there's other countries that's doing this you know what i mean that, that already have these different packages that you can buy or whatever and you only have access to those things which they give you access to or they limit you know they throttle the connection make it go slower for these other things that you don't pay premium for or however they do it you know so yeah. uh, it, it's in practice already. Yeah, they do it in Portugal as well. Facts, facts. Portugal, yep. I seen a little advertisement from them where it's like, you know, you pick one bubble, thirteen ninety nine, another one, you just keep on adding them up until you get your total, which, you know, for, for guys like us or whatever that use the internet, you know, we looking at <laughs> you know paying double than what we pay now for the same internet, basically, because we want to still have access to everything, you feel me? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I'm end up having to pay double. It's kind of trying to wait for uh, Brother Melvin, but I guess I'll go ahead and jump into the VPN section. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's get into that, because, you know, with that net neutrality, also, you know, it's a lot of snitching that come along with that, and, you know, people want to protect their sales online, their ISPs may or may not give up their information to these or interests of some other sort or whatever so yeah we don't have to protect ourselves yeah, so um in our previous episode of tech talk uh we was telling you about how to uh, protect yourself we even gave you like a list of reference of uh the best vpns to, uh, to be able to protect us online a vpn is a virtual private network uh basically it's like a uh tunnel to which your data it's like a tunnel to which your data uh, goes through and basically nobody can see it excuse me one second yeah now they can see you but all right so uh, yeah, uh vpn tunnel and it works is uh, basically uh, encrypted, and it doesn't get decrypted to the other gets to the other end of the destination address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, before we were telling you, you know, just to get a VPN, and uh, the idea was just to protect all of your stuff. So protect it from hackers, protect it from you know governments. Uh, I think the government had passed some kind of bill to where ISP could sell your data. Like in February or something like that, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so, and we was telling you to put it on each little node. So now we're telling you that you need to put your VPN, your virtual private network, on your actual gateway router. And uh, the reason for that is because the router is the place where all of the magic happens. Uh, if anybody knows anything about it, the OSI model, all of that, most of that stuff takes inside of the router so the routers come how fast how slow what kind of data you're sending what kind of packets uh getting encapsulated sending back and forth and uh mm -hmm. this is going to give uh your isp total control on whatever they can do now as fast but if you uh put a vpn on your gateway router and let's, let me go to my slides I'm going to take my router since he is just talking about routers. I'm going to take my router and put it in the microwave. <laughs> hey, you know what, man? There is an actual way that people uh, revive 
video cards like that. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah, they like take it down all down to the PCB board and they put it in the oven and supposedly this gives it new life for a little bit. Wow. Damn. I'm sitting there talking shit. <laughs> no. I think internet is just I wish this neutrality thing will go through. But I just think these ISPs, man, they can offer you garbage and you pretty much stuck with it. Yeah. I hope it go through too just to make people start paying attention. Plus, you know, it might be a, a niche. You need to, you know, make some bread off of it because people don't know how to protect the networks. Right. Right. Okay, so here we have a picture of the home network that's set up. We have VPN on the actual router. And as you can see, everything that's connected to the router, whether it's Wi Fi or uh, wired, is up under the blanket of the VPN. Your gateway, your router, that's what your router does. It routes your information. This is where all the magic happens of the OSI model. So basically, this is how uh, your ISP gets this information as far as uh, how many packets you're sending, how much data you use, and what speed you're doing, what kind of data you're dealing with, you know, what sites you're going to, you know, uh, other different things. They, and uh, in our first presentation, that's what we were talking about. Um, ISPs having the power to sell the entirety of your information. And this is why we were telling you to get VPNs, but back then, we were telling you to do it on each little node. Now we're telling you that you're going to have to do it on your router. Uh, the bad thing about uh, putting things on, putting a VPN on your router is that they have so many different types of routers, they're going to have a whole bunch of different types of interfaces. Um, I'm going to show you in my interface. I got a TP, TP link router. And, and so uh, there's going to be different ways. There's no one method to put a VPN on the route. Am I sharing? I'm still sharing? Y'all see my screen? Most definitely. Yeah, yeah, you're sharing. Okay. All right, so this is a router screen. And, uh, you know, they have a, a whole VPN thing. If you go in the advanced settings, they have a whole VPN tab. If you go down there. But uh, I didn't even hook it up like that. I went to network, internet. And this little drop down here, let me see if it's on the other screen. This little drop down here on PP, TP. First, it said uh, dynamic for DHCP. And if you do a drop down, it has a list of like five things. Uh, and there's, like I said, there's no one way to put a VPN on. And there's going to be all different kinds of uh, graphical interfaces on each different routers. Uh, and also, you're going to have to have uh, your your VPN provider information. So this is what I put in my email and my uh, uh, password to my VPN provider because they gave me a list of servers. And uh, for this particular one, I did it out in LA. Now, I'm in New York. And uh, if, you, if you watch our previous episode, we go over VPN and how it masks the address. So uh, if you, if you uh, let's say, go to Yahoo uh, and you put it on the Canadian server, it's going to show you Yahoo of, of Canada. It's going to show you what the let weather is like from closest to that local server. And uh, I got an example of that here, too, since, uh, like I said, I did this out in Cali. I'm in New York. You can see this right here. It says Shaver Lake, California like Southern California, like it was not hot. It was like 30 degrees up in New York. But uh, that's what a VPN does. It, it uh, basically lets you operate from another location. And, and you know, uh, that was another thing that we had touched on when uh, we uh, gave our first presentation that VO VPNs give you geolocation. So let's say if uh, you want some content from Japan, you could choose a server from Japan and uh, content you otherwise would be locked out of unless mm -hmm. you had a, had a VPN on it. Um, mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, that's basically it. You know, just uh, you gotta um, learn how to put it. And it, it it's, it's not real complex. It takes a little bit of study. Um, some basic things that you gotta know from now on. And, and this is from now on, you know, um, go on days where you just plug up the internet, get you, you know, just browse or do whatever you wanna do. You need to protect yourself. And this is really basic stuff. Uh, some prerequisites. You might need to just learn a little bit about IP addresses. Just just a little bit. I mean, you know, you could, you don't need a whole college course worth. You just need to know what an IP ad address is and what it does. Uh, maybe the difference between the ATP and uh, static, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. When you put your VPN in, it's going to uh, give you your public IP address. So if you do a little study and find out what your public IP address is versus your private one and the difference. So like uh, out here on the internet, once you connect to a VPN server, let me put back to that. this is going to be your public IP address. And your IP address is just saying, Hey, I'm such and such, and I'm in this location. Now, your private IP address is going to be probably default. It's going to be 192.168. something. Dot something. You know, dot zero. Dot one. Something. Uh, and that's just going to be the default settings for your private IP. Uh, you don't really need to go into detail of like uh, the different classes of networks, the class A, B, and C, and all that. You know, it's not that uh, not that advanced. But uh, let's go back to your VPN provider. Let's see. So whoever you have, if you have Nord, if you have uh, Pia, you have uh, what's some other V? Uh, hide my ass. That's the actual name. Hide my ass. Uh, <laughs> Vanish IP. Uh, Viper. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, things like that. You can go to the actual. Page and sign up, and, you know, just type in uh, VPN router or, or something similar like that, and it'll tell you how to log that particular VPN, or it'll get you pretty close to logging that particular VPN on your router. And so, what I did with mine is, uh, like I said, I went here to these servers and uh, kind of messed it up. You can't see behind that, but behind there it says PPTP. That's where it's lit up in red. And, you know, uh, over here it has the TCP UDP if you're going to use the open VPN version. Uh, and like I said, there's multiple different ways to set your VPN in motion. So, uh, but it's absolutely imperative if uh, this vote goes through that you learn how to do this stuff. It's not real hard. It's not real complicated. But, uh, I'm going to yield the floor with that. Yeah, man. Uh, every every everybody that's a user of the internet is gonna have to get you know some sort of um, skill level. You're gonna have to get your bars up a little bit, and, and not too much. You know, like Brother Higgs was saying, you might just want to know how to do an IP config, you know, or NS lookup, and you know check your environment on your computer or whatever before you do anything or whatever the case may be. Um, and that you know that's pretty much it. Try to protect yourself out there. We're not here to necessarily um, argue whether it's right or wrong to do these things in terms of this this vote going on or what. But whatever happens, you you have to you know, to your situation, and that's pretty much what we're trying to do. So whatever happens, we want to try to adapt to it. Yeah. There's a couple of things you can run into to putting on your VPN. Uh, if you put it on a server that's too far, it's gonna it's, it lag your net and make it a lot more slower. Uh, it picks up uh, your purchases. If you're trying to purchase stuff, you know, you might, you, you may not be able to use Amazon if you got your VPN in Zurich, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's best to probably try to find a server that's local and close to where you are already. And that way your service doesn't change much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely, man. That is um, 
again, everybody that's watching, um, <clears throat> technology is changing things. Technology really is dictating uh, or bar for bar with science. And with the science and technology, it gives way to how things are engineered and also how things are made from a mathematic aspect when it comes to measurements, dimensions, um, what makes a plane fly the way that it does. Well, science, technology, and engineering go into that. So right now, what's changing is education. What's important to us? What we teach our children. Because now, just English, math, history won't cut it. It just will not cut it in a technology-based society. Something that we are, just think about this. In my, in, my, in my humble opinion, I think we're a good 15 years, maybe, and I'm stretching it probably, to where we won't be using paper currency anymore. Um, we won't be exchanging what we would call your, your, your traditional currency anymore. Um, we're, we're, we're turning into a technolo technological-based society. Um, to a point where mm -hmm. <clears throat> you'll probably go to school from home. You could shop from home. You can have clothes delivered to you from home. Um, the way that we socialize, we're being socially engineered in a way that's far more dynamic than we think. Um, and we have to be very, very aware of that. Not just about fighting it, but knowing how to operate in it. Um, it's very important being technically... Uh, astute and embracing technology, very important aspect. Um, but you know, of course I yield a four to you brothers, you did a phenomenal job. Um, and I know this is an ongoing conversation because technology can be so intimidating to some people um, because of the way that it's expressed in movies <laughs> and fiction as some way out thing, but not realizing how much technology goes into making Laundry detergent. It's a hell of a lot of technology goes into making that. It's just, a, it's just, it's just an interesting. Yeah, yeah I yield as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, I read a article. You know, it was an op-ed, in my opinion. Um, that by twenty thirty, eight million jobs are going to be taken away, and and you see it already. You know. Uh, me and my wife we was at Applebee's, and they had a uh, they come and set the little tablet on your on your table, and you pay for it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. that, that, yep. <laughs> that used to be a person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. that, yep. that job is already gone. Mm -hmm. No doubt, bro. <laughs> That's real. Grocery stores, <laughs> uh, grocery stores the same way. You go to Walmart. There's barely two or three cashiers. The rest are automated. Yeah, yeah. They got one person supervising, like ten of them automated cashier things. Yes. So they 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 saving. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, there used to be people. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's crazy. Yep. And then our people, we gotta stop being intimidated by it. I mean, this TV makes it look like you know. Only super smart geniuses, you know, do the programming code and the robotics and all that. Mm. And it's the people who just work through their problems. You know, get your hands dirty in the information, uh, find a problem, work through it, and that, and that's it. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. to me. You know, if, yeah, if man. we could teach ourselves metal nature and and all these <laughs> other different <laughs> languages, mm -hmm. you teach yourself, you know, how to code. Yep. Right. Pascal. Computer Old stuff like Pascal. Yeah. We could be studying that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no question. Yep. So that's really powerful uh, information that we just received from uh, Brother Higgs and Brother Tristan in regards to net neutrality um, and VPNs. I mean, really powerful information. And, you know, we're going to segue right into Brother. Melvin Jefferson, uh, Brother Mel, uh, what, what's your perspective as we talk about net neutrality? Uh, what's, your, what's your perspective on that? Uh, yeah, man, I think it's, you know, receiving a lot of popularity now, everybody mentioning it. 
you know, I think, in my opinion, it's going to happen uh, just because of implementation. You know, uh, you know, the SEC, they're trying their thing to try to regulate things, but I think this is not going to happen simply because uh, there hasn't been a test trial yet. You know, ISPs are going to lose a lot of money off of just making, you know, a sudden change. So they, they have to run the test trial and to test the market, see how it responds, see how they can uh, get certain deals from other companies by offering, you know, this type of you know, neutrality regulation to the eyes, to the internet. So I think it's just that right. I think it's more like in this baby phase. So it's a good idea, you know, for companies that want to profit off of it. Those of us who do use the internet, those as a consumer, not necessarily great, but I think right now we have nothing to worry about just because, uh, Nothing has been officially signed on paper. And even if it does have an ad infested for try run, last thing that ISP wants is to lose the majority of their consumer base. That's my thoughts on that. So, so, and you know, that's pretty insightful. Um, what about VPNs? I mean, with the advent of net neutrality, what about the the VPN craze, I want to say, has always been there, but it hasn't truly been accessible to the people for a very long time, at least not the public. You kind of had to have some savvy to know about VPNs. So, I mean, what's your opinion on the VPNs and what is it? Uh, right. So, uh, I think that the people have been kind of afraid of VPNs just because it's not something that they can, you know, pay for and then kind of sit in the corner of the router and if you actually have to know what you're doing with a VPN, you got to know how to select one. You got to know, you know, what they are allowed to take in. And so I think, you know, just the sheer questionability of, you know, how to use a VPN on a regular basis, most people are afraid of. But it has been available quite a long um, most companies use VPNs. I know my, my particular company does. Um, so is this something that I think every person who browses on the internet at least, you know, two or more hours a day should have? Just because it, it's going to protect you, it's going to protect your data, and it's going to make your internet shopping, for those of us who do a lot of shopping on the internet, a lot safer just because uh, these, these particular websites won't have direct access to your identity. Um, I think this is something we can take into consideration. Um, tonight, actually, I have eight steps, eight pretty easy steps that most people can use to detect with a really good VPN. I know it's very complex when you're checking. So I, I try to trick it to my eight things to look for. I think this will help you and then I can let you know why these things are very important. All right. So the first thing is you know, this is basically how you're going to choose a VPN provider. This is what you look for when you shop. Uh, number one is usually the most of the thing. <laughs> Cost versus security. You know, VPNs, some are affordable, some are free. And some are very, very expensive. Depending on who you get and the type of coverage they offer, uh, they can be pretty expensive. Uh, I automatically, I'll tell you right off the bat, free runs are no good. You got to go through one or off of that one. Uh, so they're no good. So when you, when you talk about security with the VPN, that's, that's what it's supposed to do, secure your home network then you have to make sure that the amount of security they offer you, the amount of security that's is worth the that you have to pay for it. So, so a lot of VPN providers offer, you know, a reputation. A lot of them go beyond the scope of what most VPNs offer. So you just have to look, look at that and weigh out the cost. You know, sometimes 
you know, you can use that for adding out a VPN service that looks like it covers all of the bases that you usually use when doing your internet browsing or any other internet activity that you use. So you know, keep in mind cost versus security. A lot of times you have to go for those larger costing VPNs because usually you're paying for their reputation. So that's something to keep in mind. Plus money is great to all of this. Definitely something to keep in mind. Next important is the logging. Uh, look at VPNs and look at the ones you love versus the ones you don't love. Logging is how a VPN service keeps track of what activity is being done. This is how they're basically able to determine if the service has any issues, if your network has any issues, or if there's any conflict between what you're browsing or what you're doing as far as your internet activity and what they allow you to do with their service. So this is why you want no logging. Uh, logging is not necessarily a good thing just because uh, your location's involved, uh, any type of thing you put in or as inputs to your internet are also logged. Uh, even the things you're doing, if you're shopping, if you're playing games, if you're doing, you know, illegal things that are in quotation, you know, they are automatically aware if they log because they're able to keep track of all of that. So something to keep in mind when you talk about security, regardless of who they are and how much they charge you, if they log, they are probably going to cause a problem quick. So it's something to keep in mind. Next is IP address sharing. So you no know, we're talking about IP address sharing. A lot of times, uh, because a VPN service offers you the security, they may feel like they're entitled to share your IP address and your tracking habits with others, with either other uh, you know, VPN services that they're affiliated with, sometimes with this research, and other times for ad space. Uh, so something you want to keep in mind is if they share your IP address, then you know that's not necessarily something that's going to be secure for those of us who are looking for internet protection. So just make sure that you know if, they, if they're going to do any logging, check for IP address sharing. If you clear the automatic disqualification in my book, simply because it's already enough that you log. So something to look out for. A lot of these VPNs, this is my fourth point, uh, a lot of VPNs have various locations. Uh, their services are located all over the globe. Uh, some may be here in the US, uh, some may be in the UK, you know, others could be you know, in the Caribbean islands, and this, others could be on the opposite side of the globe. You got China, Switzerland, you know, Australia, so they're all over the place. Something to keep in mind when you're looking for a potential VPN service provider is to make sure that if they offer a particular location, you want to make sure that they at least have some type of flexibility within the jurisdiction of the location. So let's say you live here in America. Let's say you're in Florida and you're trying to access something on the internet that's in, I don't know, London, you know, the UK. Uh, your VPN service provider may be located in London, and so then that means that they go under London jurisdiction when it comes to the internet law. So while the US may be a little bit more flexible with certain things, the UK may not be. A great example of that is certain countries now don't allow Netflix access. They actually block Netflix access. So if you, you know, if you're using a VPN and it's stationed somewhere where Netflix is not allowed, 
and you want to watch Netflix on your VPN, that's something to keep in mind. The location does matter. Uh, if you pick the U.S., it goes under U.S. jurisdiction. If you pick something that's a little bit more uh, flexible, the current jurisdiction, I know, for example, um, the Bahamas, like the Caicos, they do come under your jurisdiction, but they actually have to get their papers. So just because the U.S. government may say, okay, take this down, let's stop their service, they actually have to go there to pick up the papers, which is highly unlikely in most cases. So my fifth point, continues pretty quickly, uh, is the server quantity. A lot of people tell me when they look at the VPN, are they slow? Or, you know, are they gonna kill my network? I have really fast network, really VPN, you know, slow me down. And sometimes that's possible, but the key you want to look for in a VPN, and this is usually the popular one offer, is the amount of servers they have. Usually when a VPN, offers the more service than the majority, then you're gonna have a, a less crowded network. And network is gonna flex you, you're gonna be able to use your, your data speed that you normally have, and you won't feel like your internet is sluggish or overcrowded. Something to keep in mind. That's a popular VPN provider is gonna try to offer the most service possible just because they know, one, a lot of people use it, Two, they probably pay a, a nice you know, fee for that. And then three, they don't want to complain about the fee. So they got to get more service. Okay, let's see. My next thing, this is definitely going to be number six here, is multiple device support. Uh, this is definitely a go-to for me because I like being able to use my VPN anywhere, and you know, on the go. So not only does my desktop need to have a VPN, I like for my, my, cell, my cell phones and my tablet to have a VPN. I think it's very important that they have it because, you know, just because you're on a cell phone network using your carrier's network, doesn't mean it's secure. You know, you, you pay them, but that's not a guarantee that you're gonna have it. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you purchase a VPN. Do they have apps or services for multiple devices? If you use Mac, make sure they got Mac support. If you use iPhone or Android, make sure they got iPhone or Android support. If you, you're old school and you use Linux, make sure they got Linux support. So you know, that's something you got to look for when you want to buy a VPN because not all VPNs support everything. And the last two here, uh, number seven is IP address linking. It's very, very similar to IP address sharing. Uh, IP address linking is basically a VPN service sharing your location to falsify to the location they give you, but your real location. And they're sharing that location out usually for ads or for research or for other affiliated VPN services for their benefit. Uh, so that's something you want to make sure that you stick for in your heart. Uh, lastly, uh, and you know, most people would expect this to be you know, the top three, but I keep this last for a good reason. It's just user interface, so basically how it looks. Um, and this is important. Just because if you can't click a button to turn on your VPN, you got to actually dig into the software and, and click a few settings and, and down the rabbit zone to do that. That is not a user-friendly VPN. Those are usually the ones that have the most problems because they have the most available settings that the normal person won't be able to understand half of where any of that networking information is. You want to be able to click a button and connect, tunnel in, and get with it. So if it's not user friendly, even on other devices like mobile devices or, or other, you know, 
computer OSs like Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's not user friendly. And that user interface does not work well for you. It's probably going to be a problem later on down the line. So those are my eight tips as far as what to look for for a VPN. Wow, bro. Shop safe. Sir. Wow. Uh, I recommend three, and I have my reasons for recommending these three. Uh, I checked on them, so dated to the last week, my last time checking on these three. I'm pretty sure any of the other brothers on the line may add to that. But my three recommended right now. I say right now because tomorrow they can change the terms and conditions they will. But right now, uh, private internet access here. Uh, you can go to www.privateinternetaccess.com. They're usually my top recommended one just because they don't do any logging at all. You know, they, they don't log any internet traffic, any DNS, any metadata, or your location, or any timestamps, or anything. They're also very, very secure. Uh, they use uh, two two or three of the top encryptions on the planet. Uh, AES-256, SHA-256, and uh, Military RSA-4096. They operate in three countries, London, Iceland, and America, and they leak anything. And the reason why they don't leak anything, or log anything, is because they don't need it. They don't need it to function with the app. The application has problems, that application Let's them know. You can choose to send them the log. You don't have to. And usually, as much as they update their application, they should never be problem. They're very flexible. Uh, you know, they have Windows, Mac, Linux. Even got Chrome browser support. They're on Android and iOS. So they're, they're very, very flexible. Uh, the other two are just as good. It's Nord VPN, N O R D. VPN. You can go to NordVPN.com. They're pretty good. They just had a Christ out a holiday deal where you get like 30% off last that's it. And you know, normally it's like twelve dollars for a month. And so that's like a good savings for the holiday. You know, especially with all that neutrality talk. And lastly is Express VPN. That's a favorite, you know. Those who I highly recommend VPNs to just because it's a very simple service, very secure, and again, they don't log. So those are my top three as of the December 2nd, 2017. That can change. Always another thing, and I, I forgot to mention this on my eight tips, but uh, I asked as a uh, highly recommended thing to do, read the terms and conditions before you buy anything. You know, at the bottom of the website, Every single website they're offering a service. They have term the term the conditions and a privacy policy. Read them both. And if the site updates them, read that updated version. Because if they change anything and you're still paying for your service, it could affect your security as well as your identity. But so something to keep in mind. Okay, brother, yeah, that, that's some powerful, powerful information and good resourceful, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, good resourceful information that we'll be able to use right away. Um, just turn it off from this program. So much appreciated, bro, much appreciated. Yeah, no problem, no problem at all, man. Um, we did have brother Melvin, I know that he was, uh, predisposed, but um, we really appreciate everyone listening. I want to give closing statements to Brother Trez and Brother Higgs on a dynamic topic, man. I mean, everybody pay attention, you know, do yourself a favor and get some, just a little knowledge on just a little understanding mm -hmm. of technology and how it's its own field. It's not science, not quite science. And it's not quite, it's not just computers. It's, it's a not quite just mechanical. Situation. 
Right. Uh, I give closing statements to you, brothers, man. Yeah, um, you know, like like Brother Hicks said, get your hands dirty. I mean, we already use the internet, you know, uh, in some kind of capacity. So you might be able to flip it to a hustle where you can get paid doing something online, and whether it's some easy or something, you know, more advanced, or if you feel like that, you know, you're feeling froggy. But uh, it's imperative that that we get into the, the web and into technology in general because it ain't going nowhere. You know, we're going to have to know how to either use it or program it to make money off it, right? Or to be a good consumer, to use these these things to our advantage or whatever. Whatever capacity you might be interfacing with it, uh, you want to know what you're doing and not be intimidated. <clears throat> I mean, we already we already moving in that direction. So we don't want to we don't want to have the tinfoil hats on and feel like, you know, the world is going to end, you know, and, and because technology is going to take over. No, no, you need to get there and program this technology, help program this technology. It's not just one or two people doing this. It's people all over the world creating things, man. And some of the things, some of these things take off, some of them don't, or some of them are useful, some of them, some of them are not, you know? But um, don't be scared of it. Just get into it and just see what happens. But always protect yourself, no matter what you're doing, because you're going to use it. Even if it's just for entertainment, you're going to use it. So you go, you go ahead and protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No question, brother. Brother Higgs, any of y'all closing remarks, bro? Yeah, and I want to say, too, if, um, if, you're, if you feel intimidated by it, at least get your kids into it, you know? I, what was that movie uh, about the brain surgeon? He's the hood guy now. What's his Ben Carson. You know, his, mm-hmm. mama, his mama couldn't read, but she took them to the library every right. day. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. um, if, if you happen to be intimidated by it i mean that's that's fine get your kids in, get your kids in find, mm-hmm. find the coding program for your kids or something you know I mean, uh, nine out of ten of them right now they can run a uh, computer better than most adults you know so <laughs> you know, just nurture that and facilitate that you know I, I, that's going to yeah. give us great gains in the future mm-hmm Well, you know, with that being said, um, this concludes another show, guys. And once again, you know, we appreciate everybody out there that um, respects the information that we bring to the table. Uh, this is an ongoing thing, man, because technology is not going to stop for me and nobody else. So get on that technology train, man. And that's why we, you know, we push technology, Team Osiris Tech, under the auspice of the science. Because our solution is definitely revealed in science and technology is like the wife of science. <laughs> so science would be nothing without technology. Um, with that being said, man, peace and power to everybody out there. Be blessed, man. Uh, we'll see you guys again. Peace.